My name is Wilfried Nix. I am a professor of neurology at the Johannes Gutenberg University in Mainz, Germany. And I'm also the director of continuing education in our federal state. This is always the question I'm being asked about the prevalence of polyneuropathy. But I must say that we don't have very good data on this problem because uh, lots of polyneuropathies are not being diagnosed or at least are not recorded that we can talk about the prevalence. Uh, it is maybe different when you look at different diseases. For example, in polyneuropathy, we know, in, uh, sorry, in diabetes, we know far more about the prevalence of uh, uh, peripheral neuropathy. And uh, in other diseases, we just don't know. Pardon me, the Indian scenario. Well, I must say, uh, looking into the literature, you will see not very much written about what is going on in India. I only know that uh, especially uh, lead poisoning, for example, or other intoxications are far more prevalent into your country here, as well as uh, maybe malnutrition or other things which are not known in our country. So it is for us very important also to monitor what is going on in India because one or the other disease might also come into other countries because we have in Germany now a lot of people coming into your country, in our country, and uh, then we meet, for example, people from India and they might have diseases which we usually do not have. And though it's very important to see what is going on here in order to be able to give medical care to care to Indian uh, people who might come to Europe. Well, I must say I'm not so familiar with your health system here, uh, but uh, I think it's a big challenge here to see uh, your really large population that you have here and to how to communicate with your population and your people because a lot of polyneuropathies depend on lifestyle. And so it is very important that uh, you communicate the problems that we as doctors have with the uh, people here. And I think this year is really a big challenge for you in India to communicate. And therefore, I am very happy that we have Nerve Corps for a forum like we have it right now here, uh, which uh, has been organized by pharmaceutical firms in order to bring international researchers together so that we can communicate and have an idea of what is going on and exchange uh, the way how we handle these problems or even about therapy. The guidelines, there is no general guideline for polyneuropathy. The reason is quite easy to understand. If you have an infectious disease, of course you will treat it differently than when you have diabetes. So we have international guidelines for specific diseases. They are all over the world the same. But the problem is to convey the content of these uh, uh, guidelines to the doctors and also to the patients. Especially in diabetes, it is so important that the patient is knowledgeable about what to do to himself, let's say, uh, what to eat and uh, the way to handle the daily life. This has to be brought to the patient by specialists. It must be the doctor. We in our country have trained nurses who do this talking with the patient and also explain what sort of cooking is advisable. So this is just one uh, example for uh, a treatment option which has been standardized all over the world by now. Uh, it is interesting to see that, as I said, when you have an infectious disease, the breakthrough is new, maybe, antibiotics. And uh, in pain management, we also have some breakthroughs in so far as we now understand a little bit better why a patient with a polyneuropathy has, for example, pins and needles or pains or other sensory symptoms. We know by now that the uh, polyneuropathy is induced by defective nerve nutrition and this in consequence leads to instability of the nerve membrane which can cause the nerve 
to produce activity of itself. Like you have it, for example, in trigeminal neuralgia, you know that the nerve starts to be active. And this is similar in polyneuropathy and also when you have a nerve regenerating, the nerve becomes far more receptive to physical injuries or when you tap on the nerve, you will heal like a lightning uh, 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 sensation. So the stability of the nerve membrane is important. And now we know by certain specially anti-epileptic drugs that this can help very nicely in uh, patients with, uh, with pain. Other symptoms are sometimes more difficult to treat, but this I would say is a breakthrough and uh, one should use these possibilities and you have to try it out because each patient, mm, yes, each patient has a different way of reacting to the drugs and this has to be tested out so you have to do it in close cooperation with the doctor. Pain management uh, is a therapy that really has brought a lot of good things within the last 10 to 20 years. The idea about pain has been uh, discussed in a lot of meetings. We know now far better what pain is about. For example, when you have a patient with uh, pain in polyneuropathy, it is not only the pain that is harmful to the patient. Due to pain, we know now psychologically, you don't sleep very well. So, if you don't sleep very well, the level for accepting pain sensations goes down. Now, less pain will cause you problems. And so we know that in addition with giving medication, it is important that the patient gets enough sleep. And when he gets enough sleep, this in itself attenuates already the pain. So you see it is a vicious cycle that it's not one modality only. You have to understand the patient and the patient's psychology also. And this is really a big step forward. Well, nerve nutrition uh, is also under research because we know when you have, for example, a uh, B1 deficiency that you will have uh, a lot of problems, especially dementia will come about or other things and uh, we know especially in alcoholics that uh, they have malnutrition with B1 and the moment you give B1 injection you I this immediately changes the picture. This is only one example for how effective vitamins can affect nerve and nerve function. And so we have other examples with B12 for example when there is a uh, deficiency and you substitute it again, then uh, you can do a lot of good, especially to polyneuropathy or em even hematological problems. So vitamins are necessary for survival and maintenance of the nerve.